He tangled explanations offered for why Donald Trump, Jr., agreed to a meeting last June with a Russian lawyer named Natalia Veselnutskaya have observers reciting once again the political truism that it's not the crime, it's the cover-up except when it's actually the crime. It's not clear whether any laws were broken with regard to that meeting, which was also attended by Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort, and at which Trump, Jr., hoped to receive politically damaging information about Hillary Clinton from a person who he had been told had ties to the Kremlin. But plenty of other questions remain to be answered. When Trump, Jr., released his emails about that meeting after he was told that the Times was going to publish their contents President Trump said that his son is a high-quality person, and thanked him for his transparency. Given the President's usual hyperbolic lexicon, high-quality sounds like faint praise, but transparency is precisely the issue. Setting aside the fact that the Trump team seemed fine with accepting sensitive information from a Russian source, it's worth considering why Donald Trump, Jr., was chosen to be the recipient of it. His blight defense that nothing about the meeting matters because it turned out that there was no indul to share is only more damning. Veselnutskaya does not seem to have any formal connection to the Russian government, but, if she had, as Trump, Jr., apparently believed, then the overture should have been seen as a faint the head fake to gauge the level of sophistication of the Trump team, and possibly to compromise the son of a potential future president in order to extract concessions at a later date the kinds of machinations that would have been instantly recognized during the Cold War. The implications of this level of ineptitude on Trump's team have been alarming ever since Trumpism became a viable political force, but it also points to a lack of understanding of what Russia may be seeking to achieve with the Trump presidency. In the fall of 2015, after Trump defended Putin against accusations of murdering journalists, and praised his leadership, it was easy to draw superficial comparisons between them, two image-conscious men hostile to independent institutions and fixated on restoring their respective nations to what they perceived as their former greatness. Since then, the differences between them have become more apparent. Russian resurrection is Putin's raison d'etre, an objective that explains his various military interventions. It is an agenda that resonates deeply in the nation that remains both bitterly aware that it lost the Cold War and sensitive to the subsequent decline of its significance in world affairs. A few years ago, on a fellowship in Russia, I was discussing the work of Hunter S. Thompson with a student on a Moscow trolley, when an older man watching us began shouting angrily. The student translated his complaint, there was a time when Americans knew better than to come to Russia and dared to speak English loudly in public. Trump. 2. Speaks the language of national grievance. He persuaded his followers that they had been suckered globally, and, in the most alarmingly messianic of his statements at the Republican National Convention, warned that he alone could save the nation. He has this long stand.